unfortunate day for a lot of people that are on the high seas. I'm sure you guys have heard the news if you haven't. Massive anime pirate sites like Anywave got forcefully shut down today. Chibi, give us the news. Everyone is discussing today on Twitter. Oh. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let's ignore that one for now. So, anyways, let's get into this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Anime piracy sites mass shutdown. Oh, Kishima! Wait! Kishimoto! Not my Naruto, man. What is going on? Kishimoto faces PD file allegations? Man, Rurouni Kenshin dude was also the same shit. Ruined my entire fucking childhood. Fucking... What was that show? Uh, Act Age, I think, was like a huge popular manga that got shut down because of PDL file shit. Nate and Abyss. <laughs> that dude is... <laughs> seemingly not... <laughs> he, he's sus. I'm not, I'm not alluding anything. That guy is sus. He hasn't done anything yet. But Kishimoto, man. Oh, fuck. Uh, let's ignore that one for now. So, anyways, let's get into this. Let's yeah. get into this little situation here where a bunch of pirated websites basically were taken offline. And some of the pirate sites even went out of their way to make a yeah. closing statement. Based My favorite site, bro. Now, I don't always use this site, but, you know. My go-to was one for this feature from Annex, where they had a nice, like, uh, sorry. <laughs> They're playing this song. No, no, no copyright. Yeah, this site. Stop it! I'm gonna get copyright stri- Right over here, Annex, right? Fucking- They had such a nice UI. They had such a nice, like, um, even the subtitles, like, some shitty sites, their subs are really bad. And the way that it looks, it literally looks like YouTube subtitles, where, you know, you have these- boxes like this but rather you know this site had like its own embedded subs and shit it, it was like a really clean way to do it the ui was so nice there was like a random feature that i love clicking just a random night to see whatever random anime is going to come up but this is what happens man right and at the end of the day you cut the head off of one hydra 10 more will spawn it's not the end don't give up Basically saying it is the end of the road, they're done, they happen to close shop, etc. And yeah. I think anyone that has been a part of the anime community for more than at least five years is probably already seen how this has happened time and time again. But this is a good time to really discuss piracy, but also just discuss the future and what this effectively means. And there's right. one thing that has definitely been ongoing a lot, especially this year for anime and manga, it is that Japan is really heavily cracking down on piracy i mean what have they done before this year um all i've heard is just more leaks and leaks like i haven't really seen actual measures taken up by different corporations to prevent piracy but more of motherfuckers leaking to the whole like most wanted you know uh, stuff on the wall where you literally saw some of the biggest leakers in the anime industry oh i i did hear um like Shonen Jump or like One Piece chapters, like manga chapter early leaks, they were going crazy for those. I remember that. To the revelation of who was basically the kingpin of all the leaks for Shonen Jump. To, you know, seeing like a bunch of different companies now cracking down and trying to arrest people or just shutting these sites down. It's been something that's ongoing for decades at this point. Yeah. But it's really something that Japan is... Also, random facts, the bottom three here, Zoro TV, Annex, Aniwave. These are all the same. It's not like these are in the, like, I, I don't know about the other dudes, but I, I'm pretty sure that this is how it goes, right? You have one parent group that has all the, like, all, all the actual backend data of the videos you're seeing is from one database. And then there's, like, reskin websites like Zorox TV, Annex, Anywave. They're all the same shit. It's not like three t got taken down. No, it, one parent got taken down, and then the sisters, which are all derived from the own, one source, is getting taken down. It's heavily been trying to focus on, especially this year and so we fast forward to today today's date and we see the announcement of all these different sites here closing down for good shutting down this is obviously remember it's not as bad as it looks because many of these are just reskin sharing the same database and at the end of the day you cut the head of one hydra 10 more will come out it's going to have no effect i i, I bet you thought i was gonna say it's gonna have some effect no it, this is not gonna have any effect like this is just a reoccurring theme over and over and like if you're super young and you've never watched you know anime off of pirate sites you know a decade before and this might be new to you thinking oh my god it's the end of piracy no 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 
I don't even I don't even know how many waves of rounds that this has been gone for, bro. A long is not is GoGo -Go anime still doing it? Like Kiss anime? I remember a long, long time ago there was like fucking oh, what was it? There were so many different random sites that I'd gotten off my head, but again, just like one goes down, more will show up. And let's explain. Nine so anime. Anyone, like I said, that has been around in the anime community for five plus years, or hell, if you've been on the internet at yep. all, you know how piracy works. When you stomp out one weed or get rid of one weed. That's right. It's going to come back. You cut off Gold D. Rogers' head in the platform in the first episode of One Piece, but the motherfucker says the One Piece does exist. More dudes are gonna go out there and fulfill his promise, right? Just because Annex and Annie Wave, they go down? Nah, the will has been inherited by all the different enemy enjoyers online, and then a new meta will form. Three more grow in its place. And in this case, even if theoretically a hundred different pirate websites were taken offline, 200 more will come yep. and return in its place. That's exactly what will happen. Piracy is something that is ingrained in the internet. It is not something that will just You can't get rid disappear. of it. There would have to be a radical change in just how the internet functions just to get rid of piracy. And even if internet was radically changed in some way I can't even comprehend, I still don't think piracy will ever truly be stamped out it, it will come back to some shape or form it is something that is just so ingrained in the online space mm -hmm. there's just nothing you can do not, not just about anime either we're talking about piracy of movies different tv shows music right like this has been going on from like the beginning of the fucking internet it's never going away now, this doesn't necessarily mean that uh these companies the official companies and license holders should not try to stop piracy but Oh, for sure, right? At the end of the day, like, don't get us, don't get us wrong, right? You're rebroadcasting the entire fucking content without making it transformative, and you're just, you know, fucking just hosting that shit. Of course, it's unethical. Of course, like, they can pursue legal actions, right? Let's not get it twisted. But one thing in particular when it comes to piracy, and it's the age-old saying, piracy, for the most part, usually is a service issue. And I am so... It's a service issue. Hmm... I like that uh, talking point. Basically, let's say Crunchyroll's fucking ass. These legal providers, these legal services are so poor that different people are going to create their own websites and offer a better product with better services to, you know, give to the client, the audience. And the audience will simply choose the better service. So in that logic, piracy is the result of service issues. I agree. Someone that truly does believe that this is exactly the case. Because piracy in this case, when it comes to anime, is so ingrained in the culture that I feel like piracy is... I feel like piracy goes hand in hand with anime and manga. Like, you can look at maybe the entertainment industry, like for gaming, or mm -hmm. you can look at it for regular live action movies and TV shows. Yeah, th that stuff gets pirated. Yeah. But I truly think that anime and manga, I, I don't know the, you know the statistics. Maybe because of the core nature of the medium being Japanese, and there's also a need for the raw video files to then get translated with different teams. Like, of course, pirating is a thing, but like, there's also different teams that that does like scanlations for mangas or for anime you know there's different groups that goes on to add their own subtitles that obviously adds into this whole ecosystem of piracy therefore anime and manga culture is more ingrained in piracy than let's say different cartoons and tv shows but i'm willing to bet you that in terms of the actual base the people that you know actively consume anime and manga and light novels most of the or majority of the actual consumers are probably people people that pirate stuff I, i'm willing to bet you and it's just it's so ingrained recently with the amount of people that uses netflix or let's say crunchyroll and they have no understanding of different sites that exist to pirate or even torrents i was truly shocked at how internet illiterate most people are i thought that people are savvy enough to understand how to pirate or just like even find random streaming sites, like let alone torrent, but like, that wasn't the case, which actually shocked me. In the very culture, that I just don't think that it will ever really dissipate. Because one of the big fundamental reasons why there is such a huge chunk of the anime and manga community that are pirates is because 
of service issues. And I've actively discussed this in the past, and so let's highlight a few things. Let's talk about this. All right. So I want to go on record to say that, yes, I do have an active Crunchyroll subscription, High Dive subscription, Hulu subscription, Disney Plus wow. subscription, etc., etc. Oh, my God. Should be flexing this fucking money at me right now. Okay, rich money, Mr. Moneybags. But the reason why I do this is because, yeah. obviously, yes, I do want to legally support these series and these different offers, but... Also does subscribing to these services actually support this series? Would be would buying DVD, Blu-ray, physical copies be more of a support? At the end of the day, when you say support, it's all just going to the fucking big decision makers, you know, of these corporations like Katakawa or different producers of the animes, and it's not going to the actual animators either. But if you want to support the industry, does buying subscriptions for these services actually help i thought that i don't know how does it work also to be completely blunt i can use them as tax write-offs i'm just gonna be <laughs> honest here that is one of the big reasons but i will say and all your favorite gotcha content creators they do the same shit too right even me right i can straight up like let's say I buy a game and i create content off of it that's a fucking tax write-off whatever revenue i make at the end of the day I can just fucking deduct that shit and pay less taxes on it. I'm no better than anyone else. I'm not saying I'm a good person or trying to have a moral high ground. I also have pirated stuff. Hell, I literally... Hell yeah, brother. I'm a terrible person. We are in the high seas. I made a video like two days ago talking about reincarnation Colosseum and how I pirated that just to be able to read it because... Let's be completely blunt here. There is a lot of manga, not just anime, but a lot of manga that are mm -hmm. out there that just do not have a license holder to where you can legally read it. A one big prime example of this. Mm, service provider issue where it doesn't even exist. And then now you have other, you know, third party groups that are going out to create their own service, albeit illegal, right? Because now you're distributing contents that you don't have the license, but fuck. There's no way the audience can ever get that, get into that series. So at the end of the day, does that justify it? On a, like a moral, ethical, legal issue? Probably not. But in terms of creating like a, there's a, clearly a demand exists. And there's simply, you know, providing the support, it, supply. It makes sense. Is Kingdom. Kingdom is a massive manga. It is absolutely insane. The Chinese war how shit. overwhelmingly popular Kingdom is as a manga. And it still does not have an official English release. Right. That is, honestly, to this very day, I reference it a lot, but it still blows my mind. Because it's like, you look at the cell numbers and the charts and popularity of Kingdom, it's like in the top five most of the time, okay? And the fact that it is still, with like, oh man, I think it has like 40 volumes at this point, it still does not have an official translation it's just such a loss of money, but it makes a lot of sense why there is just piracy for the series. And obviously, when you open the door up for something so massive like, for instance, Kingdom, that has millions of readers, people are going to pirate it, and then they're going to branch out and probably pirate other things since they're yeah. already on a pirated website. And so this stems back around to the whole service issue. piracy is a service issue. And I feel like a lot of companies, for the most part, they don't understand that people don't want to have to pay monthly subscriptions for five different services to be able to read or watch something. <laughs> of course. Why would you pay money for something when you can search, insert anime name, watch free online on Google, you get fucking 10 separate websites that gives you that content, and it's just like, duh! Of course they're gonna do that instead! Once again, the only reason why I do this type of stuff and I pay for it, besides obviously the legal means, tax is it is a tax write-off. I'm gonna be blunt. Nobody wants to pay 7 to $10 of for each not. individual subscription service. The only subscription service I want to be completely... And honestly, at this point, it's not really about the paying for the subscription service. It's the value proposition that's tied to the subscription services that makes the user realize it's just not worth the money. If you truly have such a diverse and an in-depth catalog and a library of all the animes you could want with great subtitles, great you know UI, making it as friendly as possible for the user, people will buy, right? It's not that people don't want to spend money. It's just that people don't want to spend money on a fucking shit service. The value proposition, again, tied to most of these websites, it's garbage.
That's why people are, you know, trying to figure out different ways to do shit. I don't think, again, it's this money barrier. People will gladly pay if the service is worth it. Blunt, that really is worth the money, and I am not sponsored, I'm just being blunt here, is Viz. Viz is like $3 a month for an entire massive catalog of all the stuff in Shonen Jump that's pretty much ever existed. Mm. That's huge. Sounds like the value proposition there from Viz is worth. Now, I'm not saying you have to go and subscribe to it. And I know it's not offered in every single country, which gets back into the whole service issue problem. All I'm saying is, is that you can't expect the average watcher of anime, especially those that are probably either in their early 20s or even in their teens, especially with the boom of anime as of late in the last four or so years, where a lot of people in their teenage years are now getting into anime. You can't expect them to be able to pay like three to five different subscriptions a month. They Exactly. It's fucking ridiculous. Let alone one subscription a month. Most kids don't even have an access to a credit card. Most people don't have disposable income. A lot of the anime watchers are also in areas where the currency compared to the United States is low. So it's not just five, like five dollars, bro. Some other different countries, that five dollar USD is like a, like two weeks of fucking food, right? It just doesn't make sense if you think about the value proposition tied into these services. And then you say, well, you got to have like you got to sub to five separate platforms. Why? Because I, for whatever fucking reason, everyone has their own different fucking animes. And it's almost as if they're all behind the fucking scenes talking, price gouging, and making sure that there's an incentive for you to subscribe to all platforms and you miss out on all the animes you want to watch. Fuck that shit, bro. I'm going to search on Google my favorite anime that I want to watch for free and just watch it that way at the end of the day. Provide a good service and people will come to you. It's not this money barrier. No, the services are ass. The value proposition tied with these services are ass. It makes a lot of sense why people are pirating. It just, it's not possible. Now, this isn't something that's obviously just an anime issue. This is just an entertainment issue in general. You have stuff like Netflix. You have stuff like Disney and all that that, you know, have just, there's so many subscriptions out there like yeah. HBO, Paramount, and all this. It's like... The reason why people went online to watch stuff like Netflix was because it was better than cable. There was no ads, you know, it was very cheap. Still fucking blew my mind that people would pay a monthly subscription fee for Netflix when you could search that fucking title of the show you want on Google and get it. Like, for free. It just always blew my mind, and I always talking to people, it's like, why are you using Netflix, bro? I can show you different ways to just get this shit for free, and they would always say, there's like a convenience tied to it. They like the UI. They like the convenience. They don't have to figure out what they want to watch. The, you know, um, the way that they uh, read their users' data can then recommend different shows in, according to their interest. And I, I guess there are different values that um, beyond just finding, you know, the, the series for free, there are different things definitely that uh, people enjoy those platforms for. Cheap and easy to get everything and you can watch it on your own time instead of having to wait for broadcasting dates, etc. for some of your favorite shows. You know... Streaming was just a much simpler alternative to cable back in like 2008 and onward. And so you fast forward today, you know, streaming services are becoming the new cable. They are. And also there was a controversy about them. Yeah, it is. Streaming services are becoming a new cable. Remember how cable TV, bro? You watch a fucking cartoon for like 10 minutes and you get a fucking 10 minute ad. Then you get to see the other 10 minutes of the cartoon. Now it's streaming services, right? <laughs> you think that the ads are gone? No, adpocalypse for ads are coming on its way. Even on Twitch right now, you watching this show, you're going to get ads. A month ago to where Disney was literally advertising a subscription plan with, a, with ads. And it's just like, you do realize the reason. <laughs> a subscription plan with ads. So you telling me that I can pay money to see ads? I'm in. And why people went to the streaming services in the first place was because they didn't want to deal with commercials, ad breaks and stuff. Yep. They wanted stuff to be convenient. They wanted stuff to be able to access when they want, not be bombarded with nothing but ads and stuff. And I know exactly. these companies need ads and stuff or whatever to get paid. Like they need yeah, the ad services, as much as you hate it or not, right? And you monkeys in chat right now, you fucking complain about ads. But thanks to these ads... I get a piece of the pie that Twitch is fucking making, and Twitch also needs to make money off of this, right? You, you can say, oh my god, you're fucking deep-throating the corporations. No, I'm not. I'm telling you how the business strategy works. Do you think that you can just watch this shit just for free, and Twitch makes no fucking money and everything is fine? The website will go away. Twitch is already operating on a deficit. It is not profitable. Amazon is simply taking a, a, a cut 
to their bottom line because they want to monopolize different, you know, industries. And, you know, live streaming is definitely a service that Twitch does dominate. That's where they're holding on to it. But it's just like, yes, ads suck. But it is all part of this whole ecosystem, this whole business where, you know, they need their piece of the pie. Of course, are they getting a lot of the piece of the pie? Of course. But if you think about Twitch and how unprofitable they are, they're clearly like, I'm not saying, oh, poor Twitch, they need more money. But everything exists for this business model to actually work. Need to get paid. Thank you, Alita Astrea, for the prom. You can skip the ads now. But it's like, that's the whole point of subscription plans. And when you're, you know, putting ads into your subscription plans. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> you're putting, like, the whole point of, like, having a free service is you get ads. And then you can pay to skip those ads. That's the biggest value proposition aside from helping out the content creator that you like. When it's just like you gonna give them ads after you pay. All you're going to do is force people to get rid of the service entirely and go down paths of just piracy. Yeah. And so the thing is, is that it all circles back around to the main subject. Everything is a service issue. And hell, if we want to go even further and talk about some of the reasons why other people would cancel, not just from ads, etc., but it also kind of comes down to controversies within the space of translations. I mean, this is something... Mm, the AI subs, right? The woke localizers and even Crunchyroll not even parsing and doing a double check on the subs. Even Tower of God recently. I hear they leaked the... Not the last episode, but the episode before that with Urek Mazino versus Viol. <laughs> they had the next episode subtitles fucking in it, right? They're, ma they're making so many fucking mistakes in there too. Something I've actively discussed and talked about for a while, but when you have a lot of translators or localizers bringing in their culture war and their agenda yep. into these different shows or manga in general... Now you're offering a poor service, a poor experience for the user. Why do you blame them to go out and find different fucking, you know, subs that have no political stance? They just want what the fucking Japanese meant us to understand. You know, people are going to be adamant by just not wanting to even subscribe to these services. Yes, sir. Or supporting these services. And they will go to fan translations or even machine translations just to be rid of... It's funny, he says machine translation, and then on the screen we have my wife has no emotion, the robot waifu anime. Of the agenda pushing from localizers. So when you factor all this stuff in, these companies keep sh If you're not watching No Longer Allowed in Another World, Isekai Shikaku, the anime that we see in front of our screen right now, you missing out, bro. One of the... Probably the best isekai happening right now this season, even though there's no competition. Shooting themselves in the foot, they keep doing things that obviously just fundamentally push more and more people away, and that's not even getting into the fact of, you know, different countries not even having access to these actual official means of watching or reading shows. Yep. And that's another thing to talk about. Let's just say hypothetically there was a country that Crunchyroll or High Dive or whatever wasn't in, and let's say, you know, you had people within that country, they... Start accessing some of their favorite stuff, maybe Dragon Ball. Not I mean, that's not even a hypothetical, right? It's happening with High Dive, where High Dive canceled their services in different in regions of the of the world. I'm not sure exactly which servers they canceled, but imagine that, bro. You fucking pay for this shit, and they say, "Yeah, you know what? We're gonna pull out of your country. Goodbye." And it's just like, "Well, fuck. What am I gonna do?" Service issue, you're not even gonna- there's no options, of course I'm gonna fucking pirate. Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, whatever, they, they start accessing that stuff illegally on pirated sites, and then about a year or two later, you have the official companies like High Diver, Country, or whatever, come into that country to try to actually make a subscription plan. Obviously, why would someone that's been pirating, like, content for like a year and a half to two years, mm -hmm. want to start paying for content that they've gotten, you know, for free? For and the only reason that people would do that, right, is if the paid service, again, thank you, Shakai, for the Prime sub, man. Thank you so much, right? Again, I don't think people are, they just want the best experience possible. And if pirating means that they're going to get the best experience possible, as in there's no service providers and this is the only way I'm going to get it, of course they're going to do it. Then let's say Crunchyroll came in with a subscription plan. And if the Crunchyroll experience was so great, that it made people want to pay instead of, you know, pirate, they would pay straight up. I don't think at the end of the day, again, it's just this like the subscription plan that's blocking everything. It's about the value proposition tied with that plan and it not being justified. And that's why people aren't fucking doing it for a very long time. And so the only way to effectively drag more people in is by having a service that does make people want to actually pay for said service.
Exactly. Make the service good. Make the product good. At the end of the day, the content is all that matters. It begins and ends with the content. Nothing else matters. Make it the best experience possible. Understand the pain points is a pain points of the existing users using these services or watching, you know, consuming this content. Provide that solution and people will fucking swipe your credit card. Service. So when you make a shoddy service, you have prices that continue to increase and makes people very upset. And then on top of that, to be completely blunt, you know, most subscription services aren't even worth the price. I mean, the only reason mm. why I pay for them is, as I already said, tax write offs. To tax write offs. The only subscription service, in my personal opinion, in the anime and manga space that's kind of worth a damn is most likely Viz Media. I'm not damn. a sponsor. I'm just saying two to three dollars for everything and even still. Still, they don't offer everything and they don't offer it in every single country there's still issues with them but i will say that overall subscription services are going down the route of cable and they're missing the point of why people transition to it in the yep. first place so um to make a long story short you know, as much as, you know, these official companies try to fight back against piracy in these sites, and I understand they're in their legal means to be able to shut these sites down, that's completely fine. For sure, for they sure. They don't understand the fundamental issue is a service problem. If they exactly. At the end of the day, this is a reoccurring theme over and over, and this is not the last time that this is going to happen, man. With these services going down, other competitors are going to rise up and inherit their will and provide even better experiences. And those sites will one day go away too. And then the same thing will happen over and over. And why is that? Because at the end of the day, these dudes are simply treating the symptoms, right? They don't think about what's causing the symptoms. And they're just putting a fucking band-aid solution. Well, you want to you know, just clear out the rot. You want to figure out why this is happening. Take a look at yourself. Think about this whole service issue issue and try to deliver a better product. If you do that, they're simply going to flock to you and you won't even have to worry about these fucking piracy sites because the user going to say, you know what? Even if these are free, the service that I'm paying, the service that I'm subscribed to gives me the best sales possible, the best experience possible. It's so convenient that I want to pay. That is how you fucking win against the battle of piracy. But at the end of the day, nothing's going to change. They made their self more enticing for official means, then obviously people will be more inclined to pay for it. But if you make things so overpriced or so overbearing, people won't want to do that. And on top of that, let's just be completely blunt. Let's be one to one to each other right now. You know, the economy in the world is not doing so hot. I mean, here's a very interesting thing. And this blew my mind. What do you guys think happens? When the state of the world, the economy is so rough, nobody can get jobs, everyone is penny pinching. What do you think happens to entertainment spending? The psychology behind entertainment spending during times of dire situations regarding finances is very, very counterintuitive. But the more you think about it, it actually makes sense. What do you guys think happens? Do you think people spend more when times are rough for entertainment? Or do you think people save more money? It does not decrease the entertainment spending goes up and it's fucked up. Think about it. When times are rough, people are sad. People are so depressed with reality. Things are so rough. There seems to be no hope. And when you're so stressed like that, you need something to cope with. You need a source of entertainment that makes you feel like there's some sort of hope in the world. Even you guys right now in chat, you're tuning into my stream because you're lonely and sad about the world. No, that's a little bit too much, right? You simply like me watching anime. But there is an element of this loneliness and this level of coping that people have during these times. And therefore, the entertainment spending goes up. It's so fucked up. It's insane. It's, it's mind-boggling. And that's why during the, the pandemic times, right? When, especially when everyone was inside and scared. Everything, subscription services, everything was fucking going up, bro. It's, it's so messed up. And when times are better, when there's a lot of more money that you have, the situations outside are better, job markets are better. Not all, you, then the entertainment spending actually kind of goes down because it's just like you want to kind of like stockpile your money. There's this weird psychology of people that starve themselves when they have a lot of food because they're going to hoard, right? When you have nothing, you don't think like that. But when you have more, you get greedy and you want to stockpile. So when things are doing better, you want to save more money and the money goes up. It's, it's, it's weird spending psychology anyways. Food prices are out of control. Housing and renting prices are out of control. Everything is super expensive. And so because of that, you know, people don't have the money to spend like...
seven dollars here ten dollars here another twelve dollars here for like multiple different yes and he's right about this and it makes sense in this context because the value proposition tied to the services are ass but the reason that my patreon is going up the reason why people are subscribing to my twitch right now the reason why people are paying for my content is because the value proposition is good and it's rough times in the world where the entertainment spending goes up for subscription services they don't so yeah i mean why wouldn't they go down the piracy route when everything is just getting so astronomically yep. expensive so yeah i'll leave it at that it was a long-winded video forgive me but just something i wanted to talk about i saw this today no, great points chibi about this but all i'm gonna say there great is points, alternatives chibi. if you are interested <laughs> but uh, i'm not gonna <laughs> now nah, this is a very great points that chibi has made please guys go check out his video Oh, whoa, 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 got a station. What the fuck? Wait, wrong, wrong thing, then. <clears throat> Go like, no, no, guys, the got a station part is copy pasted from my SAO title I'm gonna upload later on. But he's right, right? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna beat the fucking allegations, so I gotta do this right now. Listen, this part, okay? This is the video I'm uploading later. That's why I had this copy pasted, okay? No, no, this is the reason, okay? Stop, stop. But Chibi made some very good points regarding this whole debacle of, you know, live services and whatnot. And, you know, it's, it's right. At the end of the day, this is, a, you know, a, a service provider issue. If you, it's not the money. Remember, entertainment spending goes up when times are worse. It's not about the money. It's about the value proposition, right? What is the value proposition? You spend five bucks. What do you get from that service? And that what you get is the thing that's lacking. That's why people are pirating. Great video. I'll see you next time.